So in the last couple of videos, I've shown you some of the fundamental principles of how you build a, a uh, app for Apple Watch with WatchKit. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on building a watch app and uh, more precisely, how you can um, navigate your user around your app and how your user can navigate around your app through segways. Now, if you've developed for iOS before, you'll know what a segway is. It's basically something that you attach to, say, something a button or an object, allows your user to move around your app. In WatchKit, your options for navigation are a lot, lot more constrained. And in fact, they're constrained to three types of segways. A page-based navigation segway, two hierarchical segways, a modal and a push hierarchical segway. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the paged base segue. This, of course, like in iOS, to create a segue between two interface controllers, we use command, drag, and then we can go next page. How this page base segue works is that you have multiple pages next to each other, and the user can swipe between them. So if I add another interface controller, I can create another page. There you go. So now I will have three pages and the user can swipe from interface controller one to interface controller two, finally to interface controller three, and of course backwards and forwards between them. Each of these interface controllers will have their own interface controller class behind them, and their own UI and interface. So if we can, if we go control run, we can see how this page-based navigation works. As you can see, interface controller one, interface controller two, and our blank interface controller three. So. Out of this page-based navigation, we can have modal navigation to other interface controllers. If you're familiar with iOS development, you'll know that a modal, uh, modally presented interface goes over the top of the current interface. Now, unlike iOS, we don't have navigation controllers in WatchKit. The OS just does it itself, but does it in a very limited way. Of course, you're limited to what you can do, so it provides all those interfaces around your navigation. So to add a modal controller, again, we can control drag up to here. As you can see, it provides us with two options. It provides us with a push interface controller, which I'll talk about in a minute, and it push, provides us with a modal interface controller. Because we're going from within a page-based navigation, we need to modal over the top of those pages. If we try to do a push, Segway, we can go over to our WatchKit app. And as you can see, I press a button and nothing happens because that type of segue is not supported. If we change this to a modal interface controller, as you can see, that interface controller comes over the top. So the final type of interface controller is a push interface controller. Now, before we can do this, we need to know that push um, interface controllers can't work with the paged base setup that we've got going here. So we're going to get rid of all this. We're going to drag a button into our first interface controller. And we'll put another interface controller with a label in it right here. Now we can create, just like before, we go command, drag, we go push. There's our little push icon that we're accustomed to with iOS. As you can see, it adds, adds a back icon up here to indicate to the user that you know you can either press this or you can drag across to go back to where you came from. When we press our button, as you can see, it just brings that new interface controller over the top, and we can just click this little back button, or we can oops, drag from the side back our interface control. So those are the ways that your user can interact with your app and navigate around your app. The next thing I'm going to cover in this series is the ways that is the objects that your app can provide to users to interact with your app. All these objects over here in the object selector. So for each of these objects, I'm going to do an individual video um, explaining how you can get the most of them, how you can um, add interactivity to them in code, and how you can set them up in the interface builder. If you don't really care about each of these individual objects, of course, going through them. I'll include an annotation that will take you to the next new video in this series, which will be about handling notifications, receiving notifications, and presenting those dynamic notification screens. Hope you watch 